So uh, we have Bernard uh, Lamborel. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, perfect. All right, great. And uh, and I'm Oscar Scheer. Uh, I'm the uh, uh, sales director for Network Optics. Um, uh, today's webinar is uh, it's on. Uh, it's all about uh, Tiger technology. So we're just going to do introduction for Bernard to 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 start on it. Let's allow maybe one more minute for some mm -hmm. of the people to come in. Uh, during during the webinar, um, you guys can input uh, questions. Uh, we'll evacuate it uh, on time, or at the end of the session, we can also have all the questions. All right. Sounds good. Where are you based on, uh, Bernard? I'm actually based in Oaxaca, Mexico. I oh, used really? to be in Montreal, and 50 years of snow uh, pushed me south. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, so I found a place where where uh, where there was uh, more sun and uh, less snow. <laughs> super, super, and a lot of good uh, good tacos. Oh yes. <laughs> Yeah, great food, great culture, lovely people. Just a nice place to be. All right, I think uh, we, we can get started, all right? So, nice. um, uh, hi everybody. This is one more uh, delivery of uh, Neuro Optics webinars. Today we have uh, Bernard Lamborel from Tiger Technology. We will be talking about building a Visa solution with cloud storage and Tiger Bridge. Uh, uh, today's speaker uh, will, will be uh, our partner. Um, so I'll, I'll give you to Bernard for to get it started. Thank you very much, Oscar, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, the uh, building a video surveillance as a service solution with cloud storage and Tiger Bridge. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about. I'll start by giving you a very brief overview of Tiger. Um, we've been in the industry for over 15 years, 17 years now. And um, we come from the media and entertainment where customers uh, deal with film, video production, broadcast. So they deal with a lot of video, lots of files and large quantities of files. And uh, for the last uh, eight years or so, we've been developing our bridge technology, initially for this market, uh, to help customers move their video files out of their um, expensive primary storage, initially to tape or some other NAS solution, and obviously to cloud uh, now. So this technology, uh, for the last three or four years, we've been uh, investing significantly in the surveillance market because it's the similar challenges. A lot of video files and uh, today with the new mandates and requirements that customers have to keep video safe and for longer retention period, uh, our bridge technology is just a great fit. So we have we have a very large range of customers for our bridge technology because it, it does not only apply to the surveillance market, but bridge can actually be used. We have different versions of our bridge uh, software product. Uh, one of them that I'll be talking today is called Surveillance Bridge, and as the name implies, is meant for the surveillance market. And uh, But we have Tiger Bridge, which is the main Kind of the main standard product which is used for IT so, um, in terms of uh, fintech, in terms of just uh, backing up Veeam backups or just extending file servers, etc. So this is where we come from. Now building a SaaS model, so extending or using the cloud for surveillance is not always easy because in many cases it means uh, a forklift upgrade. It means money planning transition training you know if you think about leveraging the cloud for your video surveillance how do you go about that well in many cases there are lots of solutions on the market that do require you to buy special cameras cameras that have built-in mini servers 
that are expensive and that are also proprietary and that mini server basically helps to overcome any outage but some solution require always on internet connectivity what happens if the internet goes down if the internet connection between your cameras and the cloud go down then a lot of cameras provide the ability to have a little bit of memory but that memory is very quickly uh, overcome also what happens during natural disaster uh, typically if there are tornadoes or any kind of significant issues uh, the internet might be the first thing that go down and yet you don't have any any more visibility as to uh, what may be happening and that may be where you need your camera the most and as I mentioned solutions are proprietary so how do we address this well Tiger, uh, you know, Tiger Bridge, our bridge technology and solution bridge, uh, surveillance bridge in particular, working with an ex witness, gives you a zero disruption, seamless hybrid approach, which means it works with your existing infrastructure. So, whatever an ex witness solution you have out there, um, you can install Tiger Bridge. There's zero disruption of service, which means you don't even have to reboot the server, you don't need to interrupt the capture of video, and it essentially provides all the great benefits of a uh, video solution as a service without the drawbacks we just discussed. So you have resilience, you have the scalability, you have the accessibility, the ability to uh, you know, recover in case of disaster, because those are the main reason uh, you may be looking for a cloud-based solution. And with Tiger Bridge, there's no need for an always on internet because you, your current infrastructure already has the ability to store video for some period of time. And maybe you want to extend that much longer, but you already have a recording server and some storage locally. So let's take a look first of what is Surveillance Bridge. So Surveillance Bridge is a uh, file system filter driver, if you will. So we attach to the file system to extend the local storage, so your existing storage where video surveillance gets captured, to the cloud. And it allows to do both disaster recovery, which means a complete uh, restore of your data in case your local recording server goes down, as well as storage extension which means if you only have a couple of days worth or a couple of hours of recording um, storage, you can extend that into the cloud indefinitely because uh, the cloud is totally scalable. And with Surveillance Bridge, um, let's say you have a seven day or 15 day retention period on your local recording server, you can easily extend that to 90 days, 60 days, uh, 180 we have people going to multiple years so there's um, uh, this is a great way of doing that without having to change again any of your existing hardware anything so it gives you instant cloud integration and it makes a hybrid cloud easy so it's hybrid because it leverages your existing um, recording servers and infrastructure and it basically extends it into the cloud now, there's multiple reasons and different customers using Surveillance Bridge for out of sight disaster recovery. So as I mentioned, if the recording server goes down, we have the ability to restore the entire uh, surveillance data um, to provide storage extension. It works with your existing infrastructure, et cetera. So those are all those reasons why uh, customers are using surveillance bridge and we have some uh, you know smaller private companies but we also have uh, cities that have like thousands and thousands of cameras or airports that are using our technology today so it's extremely scalable and it's very cost effective now when we look into the surveillance market today um, what we're seeing is that Yes, there are people that are putting the recording servers, the software, and everything in the cloud, but they're still a minority because of the cost, but also because of the need to redeploy a complete infrastructure. Um, there are people that have need for 
small branch offices. So they have a primary site, but they might have some additional sites around. But we're seeing that the uh, bulk of customers have already have an, uh, an X witness deployment and they just want to leverage and take advantage of the cloud again to secure their video surveillance and to have a disaster recovery or to extend their retention period. And this is where we come in. Um, if you're a reseller, it gives you the ability to drive more revenue because obviously uh, the cloud and Hagabridge Bridge are solutions that are OPEX. So it allows customers to uh, do a, a, a operative expense as opposed to a capital expense. Um, it doesn't require any expertise. So this is another advantage of using our solution. It is so easy to use. It's literally a two minute installation. As I mentioned earlier, no downtime, but it's really, really easy. And there's virtually no support. Uh, there's less hardware to worry about and let the cloud do the work. So it really eliminates stress and makes it easy for everybody. Uh, in terms of some of the features, and I'll go quickly because I wanna really take some time to uh, go over the solution and do a little demo. So it's a software only. So there is no need for additional hardware. It uses your existing infrastructure. You simply install the surveillance bridge software on the recording server, and then you connect to your cloud account. And we have done this literally in, uh, in within five minutes with customers that did not have a cloud account and did not have any of the software. And by downloading the software, creating an account in the cloud and connecting to the cloud, we've been able to do that in five minutes. Usually it takes a little longer. That was with somebody who was pretty uh, proficient at the keyboard, but normally let's say within half an hour, it's more than enough uh, to, uh, to take the time to learn about the software, download it, figure out to create the account and so on. Again, very important, no disruption of service. So a lot of solutions that are taking your data to the cloud um, are based on a gateway, which shows up as a separate drive on your desktop. In the case of Surveillance Bridge, we attach to the existing drive and you only need to point to where your data is and then we can start replicating it. So it's not a separate file system, virtual file system. It is part of the file system. It's transparent to NX Witness. So NX Witness doesn't know we're operating because we're operating under the hood. We, the NX Witness talks to the file system and then we attach to the file system and we make the file system look infinitely larger in size. Um, so again, there's no workflow change, there's no data to copy or move, and we provide what we call continuous data protection. So it's not a scheduled backup. It's not like at three o'clock in the morning, we start making a copy of your camera data, because that would mean if something happened, you would lose all the data of the day. So what we do is continuous. So every time an X witness creates a file, when the file closes, whoops, we start replicating it to the cloud. And we store the data in the native format in the cloud, which means whichever cloud provider you choose, and we work with all the cloud provider, and this is important, Tiger is not a cloud provider. We provide the connector that connects the NX Witness storage and, and video surveillance storage to the cloud provider of choice. So you can choose AWS, Azure, IBM, Google, Backblaze, Wasabi, R-Store, Seagate. There's lots of them out there that you can choose. Uh, and when you navigate directly to your cloud account, you can actually see all your video files. So you can actually access your video files even if you're not running Surveillance Bridge. Um, we also support archive tiers in the cloud. So if we have increasingly, we're uh, meeting customers that are receiving mandates to store their 
video archives for a long time, like cannabis, for instance, they need to store our pharmaceutical. In some cases, they have to keep the data, the video data for five years. We have customers in the Fed environment that have to keep data inf indefinitely. They just don't have an end period. In order to do this cost effectively, um, you have to use the cloud and you have to use the cloud archive. Um, and when I refer to cloud archive, I'm sure everybody's heard of um, Amazon Glacier or Glacier Deep or uh, Azure Archive uh, or, or Google Archive. So these companies offer a tier of storage that is designed for storing data long term. The idea is that you don't pay much, you pay much less. Um, you know, it could be a tenth and sometimes less than a tenth of the money you would spend for quick access in exchange when you need the data you you may need to wait a few minutes or a few hours before you can access the data depending on how much you're willing to pay to retrieve the data but typically this is a great solution when customers need to hold the data but don't have the need to revisit that data very often unless a case comes up and they have to go back to it so in terms of architecture and how NX Witness works, so you would have an NX Witness recording server with all the cameras currently recording to NX Witness. You would install Surveillance Bridge on the same recording server. NX Witness is basically talking to the file system. It doesn't know Surveillance Bridge is there, so NX Witness talks to the NTFS file system and writes all its video files. And under the hood, Surveillance Bridge presents this file system as if it was extremely large. So it can actually scale to any size. So for instance, even a one terabyte local drive can look like a one petabyte storage, literally. So what we do is we um, create what's called stub files. So first of all, we replicate the files to the cloud of your choice. And then if, there's, if we're running out of space on the local drive, we replace the file with a stub file, which doesn't take any space. But to NX Witness, the file is still there. It still thinks it's there. So this is why you can make it super large. Now, you don't want necessarily to make this local drive too small because this is your safety net. If the internet connection breaks down, if it's not fast enough at some point during the day, for instance, it doesn't matter because it's going to act as a buffer. So obviously, the more buffering you think you may need if you're in an area where the internet connection may go down for a couple of hours or you're afraid maybe there might be construction and the internet cable may be taken down for two, three days, we usually recommend having storage for a few days you know two three days is 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 very good uh, some people only take a couple of hours but obviously they don't they they're willing to accept that you know if if something terrible happened with their internet then they they may be limited to the amount of data they can store locally but this is really a choice you can make and choose. Some people have 30 days of local storage and all they want to do is have a replication to the cloud for disaster recovery in case this drive goes down. So we see all kinds of use cases where people either use a small amount of storage with a lot of cloud or they use a lot of local storage with equivalent in the cloud and it's, it's all good. Um, Okay, so the way Surveillance Bridge works, and I'll, I'll give you a demo instead of showing this, but essentially we have a, a, a configuration panel and, uh, and, and, and that's about it. So let me just switch here to, um, there we go. Okay, so this is my NX Witness interface. And right now I'm using uh, Surveillance Bridge as a disaster recovery, which means the data is still on my local disk and I can play it from the local disk. But um, if I look inside, let me go to the uh, server now. So this is my NX Witness server. And let me just move my 
file system here. So you can see my HD witness media and I have my high quality, low quality, etc. So if I dive into, this is the, the file system where the files that I was just playing are. And so you can see these are the files that NX Witness is looking at. Now you will notice there's this orange icon that says replicated. That's our surveillance bridge that tells me these files have been replicated to the cloud. Where have been replicated? So let's look at surveillance bridge. This is the configuration for surveillance bridge. It's very simple. Uh, essentially, all you have to do is add a source here. So you can say add a source, and then you can choose and point where your video data is. Right now I'm running into a VM, so it's all on my C drive, but I could point to a different drive, I could point to an entire drive, etc. So I would typically only need to point to my HD witness media file folder. So I'll cancel this because I had it already configured. And actually, I can delete this one here. Okay, so I, after I've selected my source, I then select a target and I've chosen the Seagate uh, cloud storage. Seagate introduced Live Cloud a few months ago, and we were one of the first to support Live Cloud. It's a very cost effective, and it's called hot storage, which means that you access live cloud as if you were accessing your local drive obviously the speed will depend on your internet connection here i'm at home with a small internet connection but you will see that it's still very decent the performance you need for going to the cloud is equivalent to the right performance going to your disk so you can easily monitor with a performance monitor for instance how much data gets written to your disk, and, and essentially that's gonna be the, the speed of your internet connection you're gonna need. Uh, remember that if you look at the internet incoming flow, that may be uh, all the cameras, which may not be necessarily everything, it could be more than what you need. So, um, but we can help you with that. So we're, we're always happy, we help customers identifying exactly what kind of internet speed they're going to need, make sure they can get that, etc. So what you do is you connect your local drive with the cloud, you enter your cloud credentials, and then you can list the buckets. Right now I'm going to a particular bucket. And when you configure surveillance bridge, you would typically match or pair one local recording server with one bucket. So that in case of disaster recovery, you know where to restore from. So this way, and, and you can, when you create a cloud account, it's very easy to create multiple buckets. So you create one bucket for each of your recording server, you install surveillance bridge on each of your recording server, and you just connect them to the buckets. Now, you can then configure what you want to do. So here I have disaster recovery enabled, which means, every file as they are being ingested will be immediately replicated to the cloud. This means I get an exact copy of my local drive into the cloud. And if my local drive fails, it's extremely easy to recover. All I have to do is basically, uh, actually I could, I'll just simulate that. So if I, if I wanted to, sim I'll simulate it because I've got my local drive here, but I'll, I'll just create a folder, I'll call it recover. And let's say this is where I want to recover my data. So I will say okay, and I'm just gonna tell Bridge that I'm gonna connect to Live Cloud again, because I need to connect to the same bucket if I want it to recover. And I'm just gonna choose the same data here. And now if I list the bucket, I'm gonna connect to my NX Witness Live. So you can see I have multiple buckets in this cloud account. And if I connect to the same, normally you wouldn't do this because this bucket is already used, but I just wanna show you what happens. So if I apply, um, I can do a disaster recovery, which means uh, light or full. The light will only scan the cloud bucket 
or to find out what's in the bucket, but it will not download the data. So it will only create stub files locally that can be accessed from the local drive, but the data will be downloaded only when an accident witness needs it, as opposed to doing a disaster recovery full, which will not only scan the cloud bucket, but will also download all the video files. So if I do a disaster recovery light, it's warning me that I already have another folder connected to the same bucket. Normally I wouldn't do this, but just because I wanna show you what happens. So I'm gonna just go to this recover folder, which is now empty. And as I click okay and I say, okay, continue, you will see that surveillance bridge will just repopulate my local drive, there we go, with all the files from the, uh, from the cloud. So now I'd be ready to start an X witness and start playing these files. So right now these files are only stub files, which means that they contain zero. And in a second, you will see the icon will turn on. But if I look at the size of these files, there's zero byte on the drive, even though the operating system knows they're 10 megabyte or close to, okay? So there we go. So that, that's just to perform a recovery. So let me delete this because we don't need this. All right. So now back to an X witness and uh, I'm just gonna resume operation here. There we go. So that's the disaster recovery. And then we have the extension. So the extension allows me to specify how much local storage I want to keep. How much video do I wanna keep locally versus in the cloud? So if I enable my retention period, my local retention period, so on the local drive, I can, right now I'm set so that I'm only gonna keep one hour of video on my local drive and everything else will be pushed to the cloud. I can choose multiple days, weeks, again, depending on how much you wanna keep on your local drive. Anything that does not fit, so anything that is older than one hour will be pushed to the cloud and when I try to play it back, it will play it from the cloud. So let's look at the, uh, the file system here and because I wanna show you, this is the, the, the camera that I'm currently playing. Okay. So this is the camera that I'm playing and, and you can see all the files show as replicated. So again, they're being played as if they were local because they are local. If I look at the properties, you will see it's the same size on disk. Uh, you know, that's 10 megabyte on disk and it's 10 megabyte in size. But if I reclaim these files, so I can just select them. Normally, uh, normally Bridge would do this automatically, but I can also do this manually with the right click menu. I can say reclaim space. And, uh, and now you will see the icon will turn blue. There we go. To tell me that these files have been deleted from my local drive. So now if I, whoops, if I look at the properties, I can see that it's zero byte. So if I go back to an X witness, an X witness doesn't really know that the file is not local. And if I scrub, it may take, a, whoops, let me just go back. So you can see that it's still very snappy. It's still very fast to go anywhere I want and, and hit play and I just get the, uh, the playback that starts immediately and it plays just as normal. So there's a little bit more latency if you notice when I click somewhere, uh, it can take a second for the video to uh, to show up, but it's really not much. And the benefit here is that none of this video is on my local drive. It's all in the cloud, in Seagate Live Cloud right now, and I can play it in real time without problem. So again, if I was playing, uh, you know, dozens of cameras, or if I was uploading hundreds of cameras to the cloud, you need to have a good internet connection. But nowadays, that's no longer a big problem. As I mentioned, we have customers that have hundreds and thousands of cameras, uh, and that's all no problem. So, um, so let me let me see. So this is so essentially this is what we would do now. If you were going to let's say uh, AWS Archive, 
you have the ability to also add a second tier. So we can do two tiers in the cloud. The first tier is what we call the hot tier, which means that even if the files are blue, which means that they're no longer on my local drive, I can play them as if they were local. So this allow me to extend my storage. And again, I can have maybe just two, three days of local drive in my recording server and have months and months of storage in the cloud because these files no longer take any space on my drive. So this is why I can have a one terabyte drive that is addressing you know, hundreds of terabytes of camera data if need be. But in order to save money, I can now push the files that are in the hot storage. If I don't need to view them very anymore, I can just enable the archive. Now this archive functionality uh, is only available with certain tier, uh, certain vendors of cloud storage. So for instance, Seagate currently does not offer an archive tier. So they have a very cost effective hut tier, but they don't have archive tier. While if you compare with let's say AWS, AWS is much more expensive when looking at the uh, hot tier, but they are much less expensive. I mean, they can save you money if you're going to the archive tier. But when you store data to the archive tier, you cannot, typically, you cannot access it immediately. Only Google has a mode, they, they have an archive that is kind of a, uh, a live archive, so you can actually access the data in the archive uh, very quickly. The difference is that they'll charge you a lot of money if you move data to the archive tier and you access it often. So it's all a question of balance between not accessing it often and saving money and, and in most cases being willing to wait a little longer. So if you archive with surveillance bridge and you archive, let's say, you know, after any video files after maybe four weeks, so maybe you keep you know, maybe you keep the first few days local, and then maybe you keep the next four weeks in the hut tier, and then everything after that, so the, the remaining of six months or a year, whatever is your retention period, you can move it to archive. When you move data to archive, you will need to, and, and you need to access it, you're gonna have to go back to the file system, and let, let's say you would need to select whichever file or folder, and you will have to rehydrate manually for archive. That's the only drawback because the data is not accessible immediately. So um, uh, an ex-witness is not gonna be able to play those files, and you're gonna have to rehydrate them before an ex-witness can play them. But you know, with an ex-witness, it's fairly easy given you have all the camera information and the dating system and everything in the file system. So that's uh, that's how surveillance bridge works. It's uh, it's very straightforward. It's simple. It's easy to deploy. And uh, let me go back to. Um, uh, hey Bernard, uh, there's yes. a few questions. Do, do you want to uh, clear them now as we go? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right. We have three questions now, right? Uh, so let me go, go. With the first. It says, depending on the bandwidth available, does the bridge application adapt the stream to record the video on the cloud does this does the bridge application does what sorry adapt the stream to record the video on the cloud oh okay does i see what you're saying yes so um what what bridge will do um it does not really modify the video because again it's independent from nx witness so what we can do and what we'll do first of all bridge application is fully multi-threaded so by default we run on four threads but we can go up to easily to 20 threads so if you have a lot of camera and a fast internet connection we typically put a lot more threads so that we can keep up and this way we can fill even a gigabit internet pipe we can fill it completely so, but the way Tiger, the way Surveillance Bridge works is if the internet slows down, um, what's going to happen is that Bridge will slow down the replication to the cloud, 
and maybe it will start accumulating more data locally. So what happens, and here's, here's if you right click on the folder and you look in the properties, there's a bridge tab. And this bridge tab shows you exactly what's going on. So we can see here that there are two files that are pending, which still needs to be replicated. I have 394 files that have been replicated. So I have like almost three gigabyte of data in the cloud. And I have two small files, probably 12 kilobyte, that have not yet been replicated. And, uh, and you can see on disk and reclaim. So these files, these 11 files are on the disk while I've got about 385 files that are no longer on my disk. So I've got about 10 megabyte of data locally and three gigabyte of data in the cloud. I've got zero file archive. So the bridge tab gives you a status of what's going on. But if the internet connection went down, you would just see more files accumulating in the pending. So more files would need to be replicated. They have not yet been replicated, uh, et cetera. So that's, let me, let me, let me simulate this if we uh, if we go into so let's say because this is a, a pre-recorded video so if I what if I make a copy of this video for instance the video files you see there's a one new unprocessed files that just showed up it's going to be pushed to pending and then it's going to start being replicated so when the file is not yet replicated you can see it has no icon because it's not yet been replicated. And as soon as it's been replicated to the cloud, then it's gonna have an orange icon. There we go. So now it's been replicated to the cloud. And as soon as the, uh, the retention period is achieved, so in this case, in one hour, by automatically, this file will turn blue. Or if I don't wanna wait one hour, I can just wait and just go and do a manual reclaim space to basically just automatically reclaim it. But it doesn't matter, I mean, as long as the average internet connection, so you want the uh, speed of the average connection to, to match your ingest. That's important. It needs to be, at, uh, typically we recommend 25% faster than all the camera ingest to compensate for any, any lag or any uh, potential issues with the internet connection. We have other questions. Oh yeah, no, so great, great, uh, great explanation. Um, there's another question. Let me rephrase it a little bit. So, uh, in a Hive configuration where you have several servers linked together, yeah. mm -hmm. and somebody wants to access the Hive, uh, how does it work with uh, with the uh, Tiger Bridge? If each of the uh, servers are recording to the cloud, uh, how how would the uh, user access those those videos? So to the user, it's again, it's totally transparent. So the the uh, the hive would basically the users will will use NX Witness just like they do normally. Each recording server currently holds the data, right? So when a user looks at multiple camera across multiple servers, uh, NX Witness pulls the data from the recording server. That does not change. The only difference is that each recording server as NX Witness is trying to access data, they in turn will read the local drive and surveillance bridge at that point pulls the data from the cloud. So it's, it's, it's like a chain of event, but uh, it's totally transparent to NX Witness. So you can have any deployment, any type of deployment with multiple recording servers. Uh, we only recommend that each recording, I mean, you will want and you will need to run surveillance bridge on every recording server. So you will need to install it at every end and connect to a specific bucket, a dedicated bucket. But then once they're connected, um, it's totally transparent. Great. Uh, those are the questions for now. Mm -hmm. Hold on, uh, he added one more question. Um, so I'm assuming you can hear me now. Which would be yes. Good. Hello, James. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everyone, and apologies for not being on at the beginning. Um, so uh, I know Halal actually, uh, but yeah. So uh, effectively, you're right. Uh, he's correct in saying that. Um, so in terms of a cloud infrastructure, if you're not locally on site, 
um, and you're remotely viewing, the files will still go from the, the, the cloud storage to the local site where the, the gateway device or the recorder is, um, and then on to um, wherever the remote client is. So you don't stream the, the recorded files directly from the cloud to the remote client, um, which I think is mainly what he was trying to ask there. Now you can move on. Sorry, I just wanted to, to clear that up because I, I actually had a meeting with him sure. yesterday, which I know exactly I appreciate what <laughs> Thank you, super. So do we have other questions or? No, for now we have cleared them. For, for okay, the so, so the last thing I wanted to show here uh, was just talk a little bit about the pricing. So we have a pricing model that is uh, simple. Uh, it, we, we say it's $50 US. I mean, this is in US. We have a, a Euro pricing as well, um, which is, Pretty much a conversion of the US. Uh, $50 per deployment. Now, the, what we mean by deployment is um, you know, you can have multiple recording server if they're all connected together and part of one surveillance deployment. It would be a $50. That's kind of the base price per month. And then it's $3 per camera ingest, monthly camera ingest. So this is a monthly price. Um, so we have an example here. So let's say you have 125 cameras, uh, and let's say they're recording at approximately 1.6 megabit per second, and they you have a 90-day retention period. So for storing, if you want to store all the 90-day in the cloud, you're going to need approximately 200 terabyte of cloud storage, which is the same thing you would need locally if you were going to store 90-day of uh, 125 cameras. Now the bit rate for the internet upload you would need would be about approximately 250 megabit per second. The important thing here, the keyword is upload, right? Because a lot of internet provider uh, are, you know, uh, will will limit the upload depending on the type of internet connection you have. So it's easy to have in some areas, it's easier to have more download than upload. But here it's the upload that is critical because obviously you want to upload the camera and usually you will upload more than you will download because you will only need to download what is no longer local, what has been um, uh, re uh, uh, reclaimed. So <coughs> this is another reason if, you know, depending on the cloud vendors, some cloud vendors will charge egress fees, which means each time you play back some video, they charge you some money for reading back the video. That's the case, for instance, with most of the big guys, Azure, AWS, uh, Google, IBM. They all charge egress fees, while uh, a lot of the, uh, let's, let's call them the smaller cloud players, uh, I mentioned earlier, Seagate, Backblaze, Wasabi, RStore, they don't charge any uh, egress or just very minimal egress fees. So depending if you want to avoid as much as possible egress fees, then you put more local storage so that this way more of the local storage will be used without needing the cloud as much. So the so you're going to need about for 90 days, that's three months. So you're going to need about 200 terabyte total. We charge for the ingest, which means what comes in in the month and what goes out typically, uh, which is a third of that. So we would charge for like 64 terabyte. So the price would be approximately $250 uh, per month for a surveillance bridge, plus obviously your cloud account. So um, that's, uh, you know, so in, in most cases, people are not choosing the cloud to save money they're choosing the cloud to gain flexibility, to not having to worry about their local infrastructure as much, especially if they have to extend retention or get disaster recovery with offsite um, capability. And, and so it's a, it's a good model. Uh, we have good response uh, for, for this. Um, and and that's, uh, that's basically, the information we had to share today. So I don't know if there's more questions, but um, let me know. 
Oh, but Dart, uh, thank you. I think it, the presentation was great. Uh, I, it's I have to be honest. This is the first time I see it working. I, I have read a, a little bit of it, and it's it's amazing how simple it is. Uh, yes. it, it, it's really seamless uh, into our system, and the way you do the playback, even the recordings on the cloud, that's very interesting. Uh, I have no more questions from my side. Uh, James, um, are we wrapping up this, or uh, is there anything we want to add? I think uh, I think that was a very in-depth presentation. So I had some questions I was going to ask at the end, but you um, you pretty much answered them all through <laughs> throughout the presentation. Um, so no, it was it was a really good uh, overview. I've used it uh, personally and tested it myself, um, and it is really really good software, um, especially for creating those kind of like vSAS solutions. Um, so definitely uh, um, well worth uh, a look at and reaching out to. Um, to the Tiger Bridge guys, if anyone's interested in, in testing it and kind of taking it a bit further, um, especially if anyone's got any questions now, it's probably a good time to answer them while we have Bernard on as well. Um, so we'll give it a few minutes just in case anybody does want to check in any questions. Um, uh, and then uh, if not, then uh, I guess we can wrap up. And thanks, uh, thanks Bernard for um, for uh, for doing the presentation. And apologies, I was not here at the beginning for some reason. My computer microphone just does not want to work. <laughs> <laughs> No problem, no problem. It's good to be able to connect with you at the end, at least. Um, and, and just for anybody that's listening, if you're interested in just doing a proof of concept, we're very happy to uh, provide you with a license of the software. We can even help you deploy it, but it's super easy. And uh, again, it's totally non-disruptive. So a lot of customers that want to test it will just install Tiger Bridge on one of their recording server, They'll start by just doing a disaster recovery because they're worried something's going to disappear. And, and this way, it's totally transparent. Their recording server keeps recording. It records locally. They can see that the files are going to the cloud. And then when they gain a little more confidence, they can go ahead and say, OK, what if I reclaim this file? Oh, it works. It still works. Great. <laughs> so uh, yes, happy to, happy to help you with uh, proof of concept and just show you how simple and easy it is. So. Uh, uh, James and Perfect. Oscar, thank you so much for the opportunity, and uh, yeah, always happy to to help you and your customers uh, move through the cloud. Perfect. That was actually uh, one of the last questions that just came in that you just answered. Um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it actually was the question was, do you have a POC slash testing license? Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Uh, so Perry, yes. that's uh, that's from Halal, who I know. So I'll um, I'll uh, do an introduction email to yourself um, and Halal uh, after this webinar. Um, so Excellent. You can, uh, testing stuff from you guys. Um, and for anybody else, if, if anybody wants to contact Tiger Bridge and they they missed the the emails at the end here, um, obviously feel free to um, to reach out to our sales team um, or uh, anybody um, that uh, knows the Tiger Bridge guys. I'm sure uh, we'll be happy to put you in the right direction. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, and we love the next witness. It works really smoothly and nicely with the surveillance bridge. So cheers, everyone. Perfect. I think, uh, yeah, on that note, uh, it looks like there's um, there's no other uh, questions coming in. So um, Oscar, I think I made you the organizer, so you'll have to end it now. Um, but thank you, everybody, for, for joining. Um, and like I said, feel free to follow up with uh, with anyone on the call or any of the emails you've seen. We'll, we'll send an email out to the attendees and the people who register, just to let them uh, let them know the contact uh, information. All right, guys. So I'm closing the session now.